Why is it hard to see like really hardcore African dance in these videos? We are going to talk to talk about today why do we see more dancehall movements in this kind of mix of Afri African vibe, like this Afro, Afro beats vibe on this music. We kind of see like, you know, that dancehall vibe on it, which is really good, which is really good. But um, where can we put more spice of Af real like real Afrobeats on these music. You know, if you've already you've already seen all this music that I'm sharing right now here. I can't play the songs because of copyrights, but um why can't we see like those hardcore moves of like for Kuduru, Afro House, I'm a piano, Kwaito, Pantula, or Afrobeats or Sabar. Why can't we see those on these videos, like on Whiskey's videos, on uh, some videos of uh, Davido, Chris Brown collaborations. I think um, it's because the African dance itself is a very fast dance. And the way that the beats are made for African dancing and the drumming is now really slow. It's actually fast so when we hear these um these genres like these uh slow r&b genres then sometimes we find difficulties to incorporate the movements and which means we have to do some variations and actually be extra creative and not every dancer can do that and that's really hard that's really hard when you actually want to try not to add any hip-hop in the in the African dance genre because right now we all know what Ama Piano is, what Kuduru, what Afro House, what Sabar, what Kintuen, what Kabetula, what uh, Afrobeats is, and the list goes on, what Kwaito is. We already know all these dances, right? They're very popular. Um, what is really holding all these dances to still be some of the dance community's favorite dances, you know, to do in workshops, in classes, you know, when people travel to teach. What is actually holding, what is making us still relevant when we see these music videos like Mona Lisa, when we see the collaborations that um, uh, Chris Brown does with Whiskey, with Davido, and these are videos that reach like 100, 100 million views, like 70,000, uh, something crazy views, you know, like we see like really, really extremely huge views on these videos. But uh, even though the intention looks like it's an African vibe, but the dance is a whole completely, it's a completely uh, whole different story because you don't see 100% African dance on these music. You either see uh, R&B or even um, dance hall movements on it. So I think dance hall right now, it, I don't know what they call, but I just refer to it as dance hall because that's, that's what I see. Most of my friends, when they do dance hall, those moves are really similar to those. So the thing that I'm trying to say is, I think that's how it, it's, it, it went through a transition and it's becoming more Afrobeats now. You know, when they, when they do music, music like this and you see all those movements, all those movements and all those body rolls, not many African dances have a lot of body rolls on it. And those look really nice on this music because it combines, you know, and I think dance hall has these slow R&B vibes on it. It looks really great. So how can we African dancers be part of these genres, like do the whole dance completely from the start to end without, without any influence of other styles on it? That's what we're talking about here in this video. So 
We have already seen a lot of popular dancers on the, in the internet whereby when they dance to a fast beat of African music or even electronic music or house music, they use house dance with African dance on it. So you can see the full work, it has some house dance movements on it and it's not completely Afro da African dance. Like when I say African dance, I'm saying like dances like Afrobeats, Akwaito, the ones I mentioned in the beginning, Afro House, Kuduru, Patsula. It doesn't have much to do with that. So how can you identify when it's really 100% just African dance or when it's just, Af when it's just house dance, when it's hip hop? Because everything is becoming one thing right, right now. And it's not a bad thing, it's a good thing. Everything is becoming one thing right now. But where do we want to go? What is the direction we're trying to get to? That's the question. Because if everything is becoming one thing, what is the future of the dance community? What is the future of the dancers, of the creatives? What is the future of those that um, created those foundations, those roots? Um, of different cultures because right now we are getting more 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 and more connected to internet and that's where most most of us live right now we are on our phones 24 7 we are on our phones and that's where most of our lives is right now i'm saying this because it's true you might say now but you're watching this video maybe from your phone or maybe from your pc but this is where we are right now and uh, the more we see things, the more we become part of it. So meaning, I think in the future, it, it, things are gonna be looking more like one, but there's gonna be a lot of confusion, especially for those creatives, because if you don't do what is being done right now, you are not relevant. So the question is, I think we can explore what we have as African dance style genre and start mixing a little bit or doing some variations or start creating again because all the creativity that that brought us here it's all in the 90s 80s or 70s because after the 1995 or 2000s there's there really hasn't been much being created after that Right now we're just going through, you know, recycle, picking moves from the 90s. I'm saying here, yeah, at least most African dance are picking moves from the 90s, from the 80s, things that already existed. And they're just redoing this in a different way. Or, or, or sometimes we actually just doing 100% like it used to be. Now that things are changing and more musics like this are really coming up and, and us dancers, because here on this channel we talk about dance and being professional and creative, like how can we, how can we stay with the brothers and sisters doing dance hall on this Afrobeats music? How can we, how can we catch up? Because we are not, we're not there, they are, they are actually going. And we are still here with our roots, with our music, with our kuduru, with our Afro house, with our ama piano, kwaito, and Afrobeats music. But when you get these dancers from Africa to do, to participate in these music videos, which is more R&B, which is more slow, Sometimes there could be a little bit of difficulty in performing like we do when it's our 100% root music. And I've seen that happen a lot of times because me, myself, I've also tried to sometimes change my mindset and say, okay, now instead of me doing dance hall to this song from Chris Brown, how about I study again? I go back to the books, I study again the whole process of Afro House and Kuduru and actually pick this and that move to start creating something new so that I, I don't have to mix uh, hip hop or breaking to be able to dance to Chris Brown slow, like really R&B kind of genre. You see, that's, that's where we're trying to go with this, with this video, try to figure out how can we um, participate and be part of these videos. Cause what happens right now, there is, um, as dancers, sometimes we look for shortcuts. Like if producers in the US can't really 
get African dancers to perform in these amazing beats because we know Davido and all these artists, they travel from Africa to, to, do, this, to do these collaborations. We dancers can do the same, travel from Africa to do collaborations. But when we get there to do collaborations, how can we collaborate with the dancers doing R&B and doing dancehall? Because we know dancehall in the US is, is a huge thing. And that's like the, the Afri the, uh, because the Africans, of, of course, but that's like the Afrobeats of the US. That's like the Amapianos <laughs> and Afro House of the US. So most of these musicians will always, always, always use some influence of uh, dancehall because most of the uh, really um, popular Af dancehall uh, choreographers are over there. So when we we'll get there, they are obviously fan of the African dance genre that it's in Africa, but how can that be used? So the reason why I'm saying this is in 2019, I was in the US, I was doing an audition for Beyonce and Jaquille Knight, the choreographer was there and he was exploring um, looking at amazing African dancers, just doing freestyle, just doing choreography to some of Beyonce's music. And uh, I think they wanted to, to see what can be done, you know, like to study, because they are studying. If we don't study, we're going to be like left behind. We won't be able to perform with these huge artists. And I know that's the dream of some of our brothers here. Uh, in Africa that want to be able to perform someday with Chris Brown, with Rihanna, with, with Beyonce. So how can you be creative enough to, for your dance to actually get to that level? So as he was watching the dancers, I realized that in the end they decided to get uh, some of the African, really, really, you know, African dances that do this, that are used to doing these African dances to actually perform with Beyonce on, the, on her, at, at that time, 2009, music videos. There were actually Africans from Africa performing on the, on the music videos that she was releasing. And that was great because obviously Beyonce, her, her music, is a little bit faster, so that's that helps. But when it's when it's too slow, when we get to Chris Brown level, when we get to some of the recent Davido and Whiskey level, and when we get to these Usher levels, then you will see more African dances disappearing. So that's the question: How can we catch up? Like, how can we convert our dance? to actually be versatile enough to perform with them without us leaving the, the dance floor. <laughs> yeah, so that's, you know, if you think about it, you start seeing these music videos, you realize that there really isn't much African dancing on it. It's, yeah, trust me, when I say this, um, I understand dance hall is an African dance as well, but when we talk about African days right now, at this moment, you are going to expect to see a map piano. See, this is why I'm using these words, not to say that uh, Jamaicans aren't Africans. Of course they are. But when, when most people talk about African days, we already know what most people are referring to because that's an issue that I already addressed here on this channel. If you really cannot see the difference of all the genres from dances made in Africa, it's hard for you to actually make up people's mind. Because when you, for example, when you go to, to a class to teach Afro House, one of the first things that I have difficulty explaining people is the difference between Afro House and Kuduro. And what I say is, Kuduru is Afro House. Afro House is Kuduru. But since Afro House is more popular, the word Afro House is more popular, popular, the title, if you say Afro House, if you're going to teach Kuduru, people will not really, not many people come to your class because 
they know they will follow the name Afro House because it's more popular, it exists longer. It's something that stays in people's mind really quick. So when you get to class, you are actually, sometimes I have to explain, look guys, Afro House is a word, it's a title that was used in South Africa, but Angolans also managed to get that influence and actually started to make their own genre of Afro House in Angola, which is actually Kuduru, but we named it, but they named it Afro House because it's popular so they can sell, so they can market, so we can actually get in, inside this, this realm, see? So if I, if I say another name, people will not understand when I'm talk, what I'm talking about. That's why I say Afri African dance. So you already know it's Afrobeats, I'm a piano, Kuduro, Afro house, and like that. Um, even though dance hall is also an African dance. But most people, when they, when they go search online to say African dance, you will not find many people searching for dance hall on that research. Yeah, so I just wanted to clarify that because, you know, people will say, Manuel, you're talking too much about dance hall as if it's not African dance. It is. So how can we use more African dances in these videos so we can also be part of this fusion that's going on? Because dance hall has dominated the industry for years, for years. You know, has dominated the industry for years in the 90s, in the early 2000s. And now it's back. 